Would you like to make better investment choices than a professional investor? Like the idea of possibly becoming one day richer than a guy who is recently worth billions of dollars? Want to learn from someone else's huge mistakes so that you don't make them yourself? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before I get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. It helps us to get the word out and grow the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. I'm sure by now you've heard of the Archegos Capital Meltdown, a family office that ran billions of dollars in personal investments. It was completely wiped out only days ago. Bill Wong, a former hedge fund manager, headed the firm and had, by all accounts, almost all of his personal wealth wrapped up in the family office. The firm managed $30 billion, thanks largely to leverage, and Bill Wong's personal fortune was estimated to be around $10 billion at its peak. Well, that was then, and this is now. After the meltdown, which was triggered by a margin call for the ages, the firm was completely wiped out, and Bill Wong's personal fortune of $10 billion is apparently gone. Mike Novogratz, a former partner at Goldman Sachs, called it one of the single greatest losses of personal wealth in history. So how does someone lose $10 billion overnight? And what lessons can we take away from this so that we don't make the same mistakes with our money? That's what I'm talking about today. Now, I'm not making this video to criticize Bill Wong or anyone else. Instead, I'm using what happened to Bill Wong as an educational example of what not to do. I want to share with you three investing lessons to take away from the Archegos Capital Meltdown. I think these lessons can help you to become a better investor, save yourself from unnecessary losses, and even potentially one day become richer than a guy who is only recently worth billions of dollars. Let's dig in. The first lesson is arguably the most important lesson of all. Avoid leverage. Let me repeat that. Avoid leverage. Bill Wang would be billions of dollars richer today had he simply not used leverage. The margin call that took him out was only possible because of leverage. You can't get margin called if you don't use margin. When you're investing in stocks, you have to remember that you're investing in assets that are inherently volatile and risky. Amplifying that with leverage is beyond silly. Furthermore, it's totally unnecessary. Stocks can, and almost certainly will, make you incredibly wealthy over time. You don't need leverage for this to happen. I went from in debt at 27 years old to financially independent at 33, and I did that without a single ounce of leverage. That's after growing up incredibly poor in Detroit, using welfare to get by and living in a dilapidated house. I don't have a college degree, never had a fancy job, yet here I am, fairly well off, in my 30s. Stocks made much of this progress possible. The stock market is almost like a game that's rigged in your favor. Trying to accelerate and intensify this inevitability with leverage in the name of greed is unwise. Warren Buffett said it best, and I quote, it is insane to risk what you have and need in order to obtain what you don't need, unquote. As someone who has financial freedom, I'd never risk it only for more money, which I don't need. You only have to get rich once in life. Becoming greedy for more when you already have enough sets you up for a big fall. The second lesson, always properly manage your risk. Risk is not a fun word to throw out there when you'd rather be talking about making money. I get it, but it's so important to acknowledge that investing carries risk and you have to always properly manage that risk for yourself. There's no right or wrong way to do this per se. Every investor has a different risk tolerance. But the way Bill Wang did it, by heavily concentrating his assets into a small handful of stocks and then leveraging them to the hilt was incredibly risky. If there were a risk scale of one to 10, Bill Wang was running at an 11. Always be thoughtful about things like diversification, stratification, cash management, and your overall financial situation. I manage my finances and investments in a way that operates around a simple question, what could go wrong? 
And then I make sure that even if things were to go wrong, I'd still be okay. I have over 100 stocks in my portfolio, no margin, a healthy cash cushion, a bevy of online ventures I'm active in, and a very low monthly expense base. Even if multiple things were to go wrong, simultaneously I'd still be okay. I'm a realistic optimist. I have a positive attitude and hope for the best, but I'm honest about the potential for unfavorable outcomes and prepared for the worst. The third lesson is one you probably saw coming. Invest in high quality stocks. Bill Wang made big mistakes with leverage and concentration, and then he compounded those mistakes. How? By investing in a bevy of lesser quality stocks like GSX Tech EDU and RLX Technology. It was a recipe for disaster. I make videos on and personally invest in high quality dividend growth stocks. These are world-class businesses that pay reliable rising dividends. They're able to do so because they're earning reliable rising profits. And that's because they're providing the world with the products and or services it demands. Think amazing businesses like Apple, Johnson & Johnson, and Pepsi. As far as stocks go, these are very low on that risk scale. The odds of Apple going bust are almost zero. Yet high quality dividend growth stocks tend to outperform the broader market over the long run. It's greater performance with less risk. And those reliable rising dividends these stocks pay can provide an excellent foundation for financial independence. I earn five figure passive dividend income from my stocks, which has made me financially independent. Waking up to fresh money you didn't go to sleep with, it's awesome. And seeing that passive income increase all by itself, even more awesome. Just be smart with your investments, avoid leverage, manage your risk properly, and stick to high quality stocks. Archegos Capital has come and gone, but these investing lessons are timeless. And if you follow them, you will almost certainly be a better and more successful investor. Who knows? You could potentially one day end up even richer than where Bill Wang is now after his disastrous multi-billion dollar wipeout. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did, and let us know in the comments what you think about these three investing lessons. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including a link to my personal stock portfolio. This six-figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over at Patreon, and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who've been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time.